Welcome friends and visitors to Monet Cafe. Today I'm going to be sharing a lesson on how to paint on black surfaces. I think this will be interesting and fun. I like painting on black surfaces. And uh, if you're new to the channel and you like it, go ahead and subscribe. I always forget to say that and hit the little bell icon if you'd like to be notified of upcoming videos. For today's painting, I'm using a reference photo that I really love. It's from my own backyard, and I've painted this photo multiple times, and today I'm using a different color palette. That's the neat thing. You can get creative with your color palette. One that I did before was more of a bright, um, enhanced more of the greens and the blues, but um, I wanted to focus more on a golden scheme this time. Oh, and guess what? little kitty she finally has a name you guys gave me some amazing names and I loved all of them but today it just came to me she loves walking on my pastels so her name is Dusty all right let's get started now here's my standard setup I use a piece of aluminum foil as a trough to catch the pastel dust this is my little hinge system and I've got a piece of UART black paper and it is a you can't see the number up there on the back it says 500 grit that's the uh, coarseness of the pastel paper this is the color palette that I have decided to use and I divided it up into two sections because what I'm how I'm gonna approach this is the top uh, colors that you see up there or values and colors are going to be a warm underpainting because it's black paper for the darker values they're already there the paper's black so I'm going to uh, just establish some values with these warm um, colors that I have from the warm side of the color palette or the color wheel and the bottom colors are going to be the ones that go on later um, because it's a dark scene and I'm wanting to create that mood of what I named this painting the golden hour I don't need bright and bold colors in this I just need um, colors that are more subdued so that's my plan and approach and uh, I think it's going to be fun I, I actually like drawing on dark surfaces so let's get started Lately I've been including next to my painting just all of the different pastels that I'm using and I think you guys are liking that. I've actually been noticing many of you recreating from my videos the exact same painting from the I should say from the same reference image and oh it brings my heart such joy when I see you guys actually attempting these paintings M these reference images I'm now trying very hard to use images that are my own photography so there's no copyright on them feel free to use them I have no problem with that and uh, I'm trying to show you the actual colors and pastels so whatever you have in your color palette that hopefully you can try to emulate that and recreate this uh, painting so um, these are uh, on top I have the warmer uh, colors for that's going to be the underpainting and the bottom is going to be the colors I use later now I I wanted to put the image up there for you to see it but because the paper's dark I have to use something lighter to get in a sketch this is just a harder new pastel this is spelt n-u-p-a-s-t-e-l new pastel um, this is a great set to get of pastels um, because the harder pastels are also very great to have everybody's bragging on the softies all the time the ones like the uh, Cinelier, uh unison terry ludwig and uh, lots of the other ones but I like a good set of hard pastels too. I happened to get the new pastels on sale. It was a 96 piece set and uh, gosh, I, I can't remember. I got it like for 50% off. It was awesome. So this is just good to, um, to kind of sketch in. I'm not getting much detail here. I just want to make sure my horizon line is right. I've uh, had a tendency in the last few videos to get painting and eventually move my horizon line more towards the center instead of a third. So I want to get that right. Now I have that horizon line in the upper third, which I like. Okay, now it's time to get the underpainting in. And underpainting, if you're new to painting, pastel painting or any painting, all it is is a, a way to get color down and cover your surface and those colors are going to peek through. The underpainting doesn't always have to be what's called complementary, like I'm doing here. Complementary just means it's the opposite of um, what colors you might typically use. Like in a landscape, greens and blues, complementary colors, if you look at a color wheel, the opposite side is going to be reds, yellows, oranges. Um, now this scene is 
darker anyway and I'm probably going to let more of these uh, complementary colors show through than I normally would in a daylight scene because like I said this is the golden hour and um, I, I'm sensitive to that right now because I have a dear artist friend of mine and uh, mostly a photographer she was more into photography than painting but um, she passed away recently of lung cancer and um, I took a lot of photography and, and shared some photos with her and she said oh that's the golden hour I go and take pictures of my cows in the field behind me and and I, I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know that. And it's that time right before the sun sets. And everything just has this golden glow. And if you see the reference photo, that's my backyard. And um, it, I shouldn't say my backyard. My backyard is, uh, we only have about an acre where we are now. But this is the field behind me. That's a big, wide, open, uh, just vast fields and cows and everything. And so I love it. But that time of day, I love walking outside and just seeing that precious few minutes of that last setting of the sun and uh, it truly is golden and beautiful so um, now what I'm doing is if you I, I'm making the values equal to the colors here so if you're new to this it might not make sense at first but if you were to take what I'm doing here and convert it to black and white I'm actually going to show you the painting in black and white at the end of this video you would see that the values are correct meaning that in life and in art the way value works that just means lightness or darkness the further things are away the less intensity and in value they have they're going to be lighter in value in in lightness um, and the closer the things are to the foreground or to you the darker they will be in value i'm not talking about color here so what you can do you can get really creative because color is um, something that is second to value. So anyway, there's, I have a lot of lessons about that. This is my handy dandy little makeup brush that um, I actually used a set that my son and daughter-in-law have this product. They sell it as makeup brushes and I had this actually a dream one night of using these as uh, blenders. And I love it. This is a small one when you need to get in those little small areas. So I'm just uh, blending these in and um, I don't always blend the underpainting but in this case I thought it would just soften it a little bit before I add the other colors. And if you notice again you can see how if just the groupings of trees they are progressively getting lighter in value the further back they go and that just adds to the illusion of distance. And uh, you can see these in blenders, uh, makeup brush blenders, they do brush off a lot of the pastel, but, uh, but that's okay in this underpainting stage. And uh, again, just getting a little softness there. All right, so now I'm going to start adding a little bit of the shadows. I love purples for shadows. I just think it adds a richness to your piece. And uh, I don't always use purples, but it's one of my favorite shadow colors to use. So if you notice, in the right side of the photo there's going to be more shadowy areas because of that big mass of groupings of uh, grouping of trees and the foreground is just naturally darker anyway so uh so those purples really add to uh to enhance that darkness and that mood and uh so i'll just uh paint a little oh wait let me share something here this is one of my pizzazz colors i typically add to my palette a little color that's going to be the pizzazz and that little pink that i added just a second ago i decided not to go ahead with it right now it's going to be something i use later it, it's distracting me right now you can see it kind of in the almost in the middle lower foreground there and uh but it's going to be a color that i think is going to add some punch at the end you don't want to add too much punch in color or your painting just becomes like a uh, you ever hear music that sounds like noise and uh, there's no harmony well that's what adding too much bold color everywhere can be you want that statement to happen just slightly and subtly so uh, anyway I'm good now I'm going to just paint a little while and let you guys enjoy the music
at this stage, you would think that I have my values pretty well established. However, I am never um, done with making sure I have my values right. The, this uh, is a type of painting or photograph that is intensified because of that golden hour I talked about and the sun setting like that. You don't even have to squint your eyes, in this case, to see how bright that sunlight is behind that tree. So I know that's going to be totally the lightest thing in the scene, and uh, so I, I've got to make sure I get that right. I also am seeing some uh, pink hues in the sky, in the upper atmosphere of the sky up there, that's going to get blended in a little bit. But I typically try to, whatever's above in the sky, I usually emulate somewhere in the scene below. Normally you would think, of course you would do that with water, but you also do that with a landscape because the colors of the sky usually get reflected in the grasses. And Well, there's that little punch of color I was talking about. That's the color that I'm using for the pizzazz. And, and I thought I'd just uh, sneak that in here in a few places. And uh, it, it sort of just sets a, an emotion for me when I do that. And um, I don't know, I, I'm just a color freak. <laughs> and I know a lot of people love paintings, and, and I love them too, that just try to um, recreate the local color, which means the color that's already in the scene. But I love getting exploratory with color, and, and I think that just is uh, what makes us unique. And I think how God created us. Uh, he most certainly was creative in um, making this beautiful world for us. We are created in His image, and I think that also means that we are created to create. And uh, of course, we can create nothing new like Him. He created uh, from nothing. <laughs> We're using His material <laughs> and uh, just uh, creating our own version of things that we already see that are in our amazing, amazing earth and world. So I, I love that about being an artist. You know, how we can interpret things, much like a musician. I use that analogy a lot because I, I do uh, play and sing. But um, it is very equivalent to music. But you know what? There's all kinds of ways to create. I have uh, people I know that say, well, I'm not artistic at all. I'm like, well, yes, you are. I know people who are amazing with putting together recipes and foods. And, you know, so creativity is not just in the world of art or music lots of ways we can be creative. Now I'm just adding a few sky holes. If you've watched my videos you know we don't make the leaves, we carve out the tree. I uh, wasn't super happy with all these. Usually I soften them a little bit by just touching it with my finger and uh, it just kind of takes that um, harshness away. But uh, typically sky holes are darker than what's uh, next to it, like that bright um, yellow in the sky you would notice immediately if I put that bright yellow right behind that tree for the sky holes, it would just show up like um, like popcorn or something on top of it. So we don't want to do that. Um, so again, I, I actually am liking uh, this underpainting. I almost left it at this stage or a little bit past the stage because I just loved uh, the beauty of these colors. Um, but I, I decided to keep going. I might redo it again. <laughs> That's the neat thing. And there is actually wonderful um, growth you can experience as an artist if you recreate from the same reference photo over and over and over and, and make different um, color schemes or color palettes. Do one that's monochromatic and then do one that's analogous and then do a complementary color palette. And uh, if you're not familiar with these terms, just watch a few more of my videos or some other artist videos. and. Uh, before you know it, you get the hang of it. I didn't used to know all this stuff either. <laughs> I just knew I wanted to paint. And I think that's probably like a lot of you guys here. You just know you love it. And I typically find if somebody loves it, they usually have a gift. And, you know, because it's like that little innate nature within us to be drawn to something um, that, you know, God has probably given you a gift for that. And don't be discouraged if you don't get it right away. Because a lot of art and painting is just learning the rules, like anything else. When you learn to ride a bike, you didn't get up and just start riding on it. You had to get the lessons. You had to have somebody help you. You had to mess up, scrape your knees. And so that happens in art, too. I often wish I had saved some of my beginning pastel paintings because they were pretty bad. <laughs> I think it would be encouraging to other people. All right, now I'm getting to where I'm adding a little bit of the 
uh, that warmer palette with the um, the greens and blues. I decided that blue was a little too bold back there. That was a little uh, mid in the in the composition, midway, and I, I thought that's just too bold. So I had to soften that up a little bit, maybe just a tad of it, but not much. That's a better color to use in the darker areas of the foreground. So I'll keep painting and then come back. Here I am re-establishing some of the values in that tree right there to, on the left. Notice that the massive uh, group of trees on the right hand side, that's obviously first in the foreground. Second would be those that one almost singular tree right there that I am making a little bit darker. The next would be those pinkish colored grouping of trees uh, back to the right again. And then the furthest are going to be those ones that appear like orangey right there, the, the reddish orangey ones in the background. Now I do soften those um, with uh, some of the warmer tones, or not warmer, I should say cooler tones um, when the, I get closer to the final. Uh, but for now, the value works. If the value works, you're good. Um, now I'm adding a little bit of that um, more orangey yellow there because the sun is so bright in the sky that those distant fields are getting some of that warm light cast upon it. And, uh, and that just um, anchors in um, the congruency of the sky and the earth. wanted to apologize here if the music seems to get monotonous I get some comments sometimes and I love your comments by the way you are why the videos get better I need your input but uh, I have gotten comments which I totally understand that sometimes the music I'm right now I'm pressing my hand just to soften up some of those grasses I don't like to blend with my fingers too much sometimes I need to soften some some things oh, oh sorry I missed a bit of footage there but anyway uh, about the music um, I am very limited in what YouTube allows. So I can't just go grab a song from anywhere and put it in here. There are certain copyright issues. YouTube, I, I do love how YouTube gives you so many resources, gives you in their creator studio, they give you songs that are free to use, but they're all about two, two minutes long. The ones that I like are typically two minutes long. Sometimes I can get one that's four minutes long. So that's why sometimes these songs, I try to repeat them in, in a subtle way. Um, but anyway, I apologize for that. I, if I can get a way to work around it or I can get to where I'm making enough money to buy some songs and uh, pay for uh, those that are actually for sale for these purposes, hopefully I'll get there one day. Okay, now I'm getting in some of those little cooler, the greens and the blues and everything, um, which is going to um, make this more of the, uh, 
complementary color palette. Like I said, it's not just going to be an analogous color palette. Analogous would be I kept the whole painting reds and oranges and yellows. That just means it's on one side of the color wheel. Now I'm adding those complements, the blues and the greens. And again, because this is a more of an evening scene, um, the blues and the greens are going to be a little darker in value and a little more dull. Um, that blue in the foreground is going to be the boldest because it's closer. And um, that, see how pale that, that green that I'm using looks? It actually looks brighter next to the yellows and stuff, but it's a pretty dull green. I think it was in some of my, my neutrals that I have in my color uh, palette for my pastels. That was a really bright blue, and I can't remember if I decided to keep it. Yeah, just a hint. That's another one of those little accent colors I like. Just a little bit here and there. It was too light there, so I kind of rubbed it out. And you get better at where these values go. Value is everything. If you get your values right, you know, your painting's just going to sing. I stepped away at this point, uh, or right after adding a few more touches, and I decided to call this one done. Sometimes I look back, I feel like I overworked my piece, and I just wanted to get this one uh, finished. And here's the black and white I told you about. You can see the values work in black and white. And if you might want to try this, convert your painting to black and white just to make sure you're getting your values right. So color is secondary to value for sure. But I hope you try painting on dark paper. And please subscribe. Come back soon. And I really enjoy bringing these videos to you. Bye, guys.